right, so here, let's see, we last left off was we entered in our credit card bill. Okay. So then now it says right here that you end up receiving a bank statement from Maine Bank of Nevada, okay, dot com, um, where you have your bank statement. There you go, right? That you started out the bank with twenty one six five six two five. Um, this is how much money you spent. This is how much money you collected. So your ending balance is a total of three thousand eight hundred and ninety three dollars and eighty seven cents. So here is your statement. Okay. Those are all of your transactions. So, I end up receiving a statement. So, what does that mean? It means I must complete my bank statement because I need to compare my books to their books. So, I need to do a reconciliation. Okay? Yeah. Now, which side do you want to do first? Do you want to do your uh, bank side or you want to do the uh, cash ledger side? Bank side. Bank side. So, first off, what is the ending balance in my bank side? Uh, 3,893.87. 3,893.87. Okay. What do I need to add? So I'm going to be needing my uh, check register, my deposits, yeah. of course, and, of course, my ledger account. So in this case, right, what am I going to add to my bank side? Uh, you're gonna add all the all the old um the deposit that did not uh, go through yet. Good. So let's go ahead and take out my deposits. Right. And let's see how many total deposits do I have? I have 15, right? So let's go ahead and take right. a look at my statement. Let me see. Outstanding checks to be cleared. No. So in this case here. Right? Let's see. We got deposit number one. Okay. We got... Deposit number two, deposit number three, deposit number four, deposit number five, deposit number six, okay, deposit number seven, deposit number eight, deposit number nine, okay, we're missing deposit number ten here, because we got deposit eleven, oh, there's deposit number ten. Mm -hmm. 11, okay, deposit number 12, so which one am I missing? So you're missing 13, and 14 and 15. You're missing three deposits I haven't cleared yet, right? Down below, so yeah. here, three deposits we haven't cleared yet. Yeah. So in this case, I need to record those three deposits. So today is June 30th. Right, we haven't, uh, actually, let me go back. So we have deposit number 13, 14, and 15. So DEP 13. Okay, so let's see, deposit 13 is for...
$3,172.70. Deposit 14 was $3,812.79. And deposit number 15 was $2,769.06, right? Can we confirm okay. that? Yes. Okay, so in this case, what is my grand total deposits here? That I am missing. I got Okay, I got 9754.55. That's what I calculated as well. Good. Okay. And then what do I need to subtract from my bank? Checks that already cleared? Checks that have not yet cleared. Your checks. Okay, so that means we got to go to my check register. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and verify. Let me see. So here's your bank statement. Now, the checks, let's see. They should go fairly in order, right? Mm hmm So, wait, I didn't even go to my check register. Yeah, check register. So... Here you wrote check starting from 1501 all the way to 1535 here. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Yeah, 1501, 1502, 1503, 1504, 1505, Okay, check number 23 did pass. That goes here. Yes, it did right here. Check 23. Okay. 24. 25 is up here. 26, uh -huh. 27. And I'm missing 28. Okay. 29. 30. 31. Because 32 is here, and 33, 34, and 35. Okay, so here, you're missing. Okay, so what happens at 1506? I don't even see it. Yep, what happened on your ledger? What did you do to, the fifth, to check number 1506? Oh, I should have voided it. 1506. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's been voided. So there you go. Okay. 1506 okay. doesn't account. So the ones I'm missing is check number 
we said the last one we put in here was check number 15, 27. So we're missing 28, 29, 30, 31. Check number 32 and 33 has clear, but not 34 or 35. Okay, so right here. Okay. So here, total outstanding checks that are pending. All right, for $2,862. $63.25. So here, I already did the calculation for you, but I do need a copy that all of these checks have not cleared yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for a grand total amount of, what was it, 2,000, for 2,863.25, so 2863.25, okay, so let's okay. see, what should be my ending, what should be my adjusted balance? Sorry, let me just double check my numbers really quick. Uh, twenty eight sixty three twenty five. Okay, so if I started out my bank account with with uh three thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars and eighty seven cents, I still have yet to see that nine thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars and fifty five cents have cleared. And I also haven't seen $2,863.25 worth of my checks cleared. So what is my adjustment, adjusted ending balance? Uh, 6801 I mean, six thousand eight hundred ninety-one fifty-five. Say that again. I got six thousand eight hundred and ninety-one fifty-five. What did you do? What had you calculate that? I uh subtracted the two eighty six two thousand eight hundred and sixty three from the nine thousand seven hundred and fifty four. Okay, what about your beginning balance? Ah, uh, okay. So you found the difference between them. Okay, good. Now okay. you need to what where does that money go? So that would be ten thousand seven hundred and eighty-four fifty-five. Um, no, ten thousand seven hundred and eighty-five forty-two. Okay, I did not get forty-two cents. So let me recalculate that. So you got eighty-seven cents. You're gonna add fifty-five cents. And then you're going to subtract 25 cents. Okay, again, 87 plus 55 minus 25. I got 17 cents. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Let's Two. see what's happened here. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Uh yeah. I forget to add it add the twenty-four the twenty-five cent on the two eighty sixty-three. Okay. So ten thousand seven hundred eighty-five seventeen. Good. So then the next side we're gonna do our cash ledger side. So we need to know how much our ending balance is in our cash ledger. So let's go to my um let's go to my uh ledger here, my checking account. 
right? Mm -hmm. How, what's my ending balance in my checking account right now? Ten thousand eight hundred eight hundred and fifty eight eight hundred and eighty five cents and seventeen. Okay, so ten eight eight five seventeen. Okay, what do you need to add? Uh, any fees? You don't add fees, do you? No, you take it away. You take it away, so good. That's one thing we need to note. So in this case, let's take a look. Do I, do I collect interest from the bank? Let's see, here you go. Yeah. How much is your interest? nothing nothing because in this case we don't allow credit cards to be uh to be acceptable right so therefore right. we're not generating any income for the bank or from the bank okay mm -hmm. however how much did we get charged for service fees one hundred dollars <coughs> <coughs> we got charged a hundred dollars so let's go ahead and plug that in so interest is zero dollars, and then we got a service charge. For a hundred. Mm -hmm. So what should be my ending balance? Ten thousand seven hundred and eighty-five seventeen. There you go. And do it. Does our does our account balances match down below? Yes. Yes. So therefore, I need to update my checking account to reflect that I have ten seven eight five seventeen in my bank. So, what do I need to put into my journal? Uh, would it be cash? Not cash. I mean checking. It will come out of your checking account, yes. And what did I end up paying for? Service charge. Service charge, which, let's take a look at my chart of accounts. Do I have char service charges? Bank fees? You have bank fees. Okay, so bank fees for six, six one hundred. Yeah. Check it for one hundred dollars. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and write here, bank reconciliation, bank service charges. Okay. So now that I have my bank service charges, I need to update my ledger, right? Because I got right. charged by the bank. For service charges, so here's bank fees. Today is the 30th. 30. Bank rec service charges. Still on our 23rd journal here for $100. Okay. And of course, I need to go ahead and update my checking account. Checking right here to update that service charge. So in this case, bank service charge.
Okay, did I have to write a check for this? No. They no. automatically just took it right out of my checking account without letting me know, right? Right. Okay, so minus $100. So therefore, you should now have your ending balance be 10785 Right, exactly what we solved for in our page reconciliation. Okay. Good. So let's see what's next. So it says here that you end up receiving a bill for your bank, uh, for your bank, from the bank for your truck loan. So here's your main Bank of Nevada loan statement. So it says here your statement balance right now. Um, Today is the 30th for 2000 for $29,221.90. 3% interest is $73.05. Current balance is now 29,920 I cannot read today. $29,294.95. Right? Number of payments left to pay is 36. Um, it's due on the 20th, and right here it says for $849.81. Um, here's your billing number. Okay, let's see what it says here. What do you want to do? Do you want to record this, or do you want to not record it? Record it. You want to record it? Okay. So if you record this, right, you're going to follow the same exact rules as you did for the, your, your previous one, right? Right. So in this case, right, today's the 30th. How am I going to record this bill that I'm going to make a payment for how much? Uh, 849.81. 849.81. Okay. Now, right? I'm going to be decreasing my truck load, right? Because I'm going to be making right. a payment for it, right? Later on. Right. Okay, what else is going to also be included? The interest. The interest expense. Okay. And because we're recording the bill, are we paying now or are we paying later? Later. We could pay later. So, okay, we could do accounts payable. And interest payable. Okay. So, truck load. I forgot what the name of truck load is. Truck load is twenty eight twenty. Interest payables twenty seven five hundred, and interest expense is Okay, so how much am I paying towards the interest? Uh, 7305. 7305. Okay, so how much is actually going to go towards my actual principal if I'm making a payment for $849.81? It'd be twenty nine thousand. Mm, no, 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 no. I'm talking about yeah. if you're gonna make a payment for eight hundred and forty nine dollars and eighty one cents, right? Uh huh. And then you're gonna pay seventy three dollars and five cents out of that. How much is actually gonna go towards your principal? Like, how much are you gonna pay towards your principal? 
Because remember, that's eight hundred forty nine dollars and eighty one cents includes your interest, right? You have to pay, you always pay interest first. Seven hundred and seventy six seventy six. Yep. Seven hundred and seventy six seventy six is actually gonna go to your towards your principal. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and record my description here where it says um I'm gonna say received or in this case main bank of Nevada. Okay, my billing number bill number is one one nine eight four six three and this is truck loan. Okay, and it's due on net twenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay now, but I know I'm going to pay on the 20th. Okay. So plug in your answers to your ledger here. Okay. So I have a loan. So here's my truck loan. Okay, received bill. So for seven hundred seventy six dollars and seventy six cents, right? Because that's how much you're going to pay towards your loan. So how much do you owe now to your loan? Twenty-eight thousand four hundred and forty-five fourteen. Good. Twenty-eight four four five fourteen. Okay. Right above is my interest payable. I'll go ahead and just fill this in here already for you. So in this case, this was a three percent interest APR on truck loan. For a total of $73.05. So how much total interest have you paid for the month of June? $105.85? Not 50 cents, it's 5 cents. Oh. Okay, so one oh five forty would be right there. Yeah, 105.40. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and plug in my accounts payable because I received a bill, right? So it's 630 here. Bill number. Eleven ninety eight four six three. Okay. For a total of, right, $776.76, right? Yes. So how much is your grand total here? Okay. 
Okay, 6,169.47. Good. And then last but not least, I need to update my interest expense account. So here's my interest. Wait, where am I? Business insurance interest expense. Here you go. Right, this is 3%. APR on loan. Okay, for seventy three dollars and five cents. So therefore, you should get the same number of that one oh five forty. Yes. Okay. Good. And don't forget, we need to update my subsidiary ledger because I end up receiving another bill from Maine Bank of Nevada, right? So right. I need to include that in my Maine Bank of Nevada. Say that I owe them money. So again, uh, national... Here you go, Main Bank of Nevada. You can choose which line that you want to put in here, but in this case, I already put in that I owe $29,221.90, right? So what right. you're just going to do is you're just going to add that extra line right here for the interest. Okay? So you receive the bill, right? So it was 3%. Interest charged for June. Okay, which was bill number uh one one nine eight four six three. Was it one one nine? One one nine eight four six three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Post reference. We received this on the twenty third page. Um. The due date is the tw is the twenty, uh, is gonna be date driven twentieth, which is gonna be due on July twentieth, right? And you're gonna add that extra, um, seventy three dollars and five cents for the interest, right? Because you already put that you owed the bank for the loan, so in this case, I'm gonna add in that interest for the month of June. So therefore, you should have a grand total amount that you owe Main Bank. A total $29,294.95, right? Which is what your bill statement says that you owe, right? $29,294.95. Okay. All right, so then the next line is when you make a payment, then it will reduce your total bill. Okay. All right, so let's see what is next. Okay. Next we have here is replenish the petty cash fund. Okay. So here we recorded that on uh, June 23rd, right, the owner took money to buy 10 pizzas and 10 sodas plus tax and $25 delivery fee for $187.16, right? Then we had Miss Irene also take money to buy a cake for $23.80, 
And then we had Albert buy some party streamers, um, some balloons, some plates, napkins, and utensils for a total of $71.82. So, how do I replenish my petty cash fund? You're going to use uh, checking? You didn't use your checking account to pay for it, correct. No. Okay, so in this case, I don't have enough space here, so I am going to be moving on to my new journal, page 24. Mm-hmm. So in this case, I'm going to pay with my checking account. Okay, and then what is going to be my debit? Uh, the receipt amount. The receipt amount, okay. What's my total receipt amount? Uh, eight one eighty seven seventy one eighty seven sixteen. That is just for the pizza. Okay. So it'd be 282.78. 282.78. Okay. So I have my credit. I'm going to pay using my checking account. But where am I? What am I doing here? Where am I? Where's my equal and opposite debit going to go? Okay. You're going to do. Uh... Your total, your 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 total of your uh receipt. Okay. Do I have an account called total receipts account? No, it's gonna be petty cash. You are not to touch the petty cash fund because are you increasing it from five hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars? No. 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 I'm replenishing it, right? Because I used the money inside it. Now I need right. to replenish it. So me buying a, uh, or, or or I guess the owner buying pizza and Irene buying a cake and uh, Albert buying party supplies. What are we recognizing right here? Business expense? We are recognizing a business expense. Yes. Okay, so therefore, business expense, 6200 You're going to recognize all of your expenses to replenish your petty cash fund. Okay. So in this case, you made a business expense. For two hundred and eighteen dollars and seventy eight cents, right? And I'm right. gonna. And what's the rule on replenishing the petty cash fund? Who is responsible for it? Do you remember? Irene. Irene. Now, are you gonna allow Irene to just take the business credit card and go into the bank? No. No. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna make the check out to Irene. You're gonna make a check to you're gonna cut the check to Irene. That is correct. So today is the thirtieth, right? Fifteen thirty six is your check number for two hundred and eighty two dollars and seventy eight cents to Irene Jameson, and her responsibility is petty cash. Okay, she's gonna put the money back into the petty cash fund. So there you go. Check number 1536. And you're going to make your note here to replenish petty cash fund. Check number 1536. Okay. 
So now you're going to go and update your ledgers. Okay, so in this case, we got some business expenses. Okay. Right, and we can say, um, we purchased party supplies for grand opening, for grand opening on June 23rd, okay? We're on the 20, page 24 now because we started a new one for $282.78. So my grand total balance is $1,282.78. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, we need to go update my checking account here. Now, in this case, this one's obvious that since I'm writing it as of today, Irene's not going to cash it out today. She's probably going to most likely cash it out tomorrow. So, in this case, this affects the bank statement for for, for the next uh, billing date, which is going to be for July. Okay. So, here, I'm going to go ahead and put in her thing right here for... Um, check number 1536, okay, for a total of $282.78. Therefore, you should have a total in your bank to be $10,502.39. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's see what's next. Here says estimated allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. Based on 5% of accounts receivable balance. Okay. So I need to adjust for what? Uh, your uh, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. So which account are we going to be utilizing here? What am uh, I doing? The, it's the end of the month. What am I doing? Uh, you're estimating the allowance for debt, uh, delta accounts. Okay. So we're adjusting for bad debt, right? Right. Now, which method am I using? The balance sheet method or the... Income statement method. The balance sheet method? The balance sheet method, right? Because we have the uh, accounts receivable balance here. Okay? So, let's see. I am going to be needing to calculate 5% of the accounts receivable. So, let's go ahead and take a look at my ledger. Okay? What is my current account receivable amount in right now? In my uh, um, account receivable account? Uh, $1,531.95. Okay, so I need to calculate 5% of that. Uh, that would be $76.60. Okay. Now, what accounts am I going to be needing to represent this? Okay, that would be the allowance for... Uh, Doubtful debt. Okay, allowance for doubtful accounts. And what else? Uh, accounts receivable? Nope. Uh -uh. This is an adjustment entry, right? Do we know who? 
So what is this 5% I am calculating? Okay, is this uh, interest payable? No, this is not interest. This is money that we are making an estimation that we are not going to realistically receive. What do we call this? Expense? It is an expense, but what kind of expense? Interest expense? This is not interest. You're not paying back somebody interest. Okay. In this case, you're looking at your, customer, your account receivable, right? Mm hmm Realistically, are you going to be receiving 100% of, those, of, those, of that money? No. No. So what, are we, what do we call that if we can't collect that money? Unearned? No. If your customers refused you to, to pay you back, what do we call that? This is chapter ten. Chapter ten. When your customers don't pay you back, we call that potential bad when people owe you money, what do you call that? Okay, that's accounts receivable. Yes, but when people can't pay you that money, who's going to pay for that? Are you going to pay for that? No. No, so it becomes potential bad debt, right? Debt right. that you can't not collect. So... What expense am I going to use to represent this 5% of my account receivable? So that would be a bad debt expense? Bad debt expense, yes. 65000 Because in this case, the government lets us write off potential bad debt, right? Let's us take a loss, right? Right. So in this case, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're recording a loss. And where is the account? Uh, what is the allowance for doubtful accounts? It's a contra as a contra account to the account receivable, right? Because right. right now, can we actually claim that we have potential bad debt right now? Yes. Why? Do you know who is faulting on the payment right now? No. No, this is again this is estimated amount, right? We're uh -huh. just we're just making a projection in the future, saying we're realistically not going to receive a hundred percent of our, our the money that people owe me. So in this case, it's going to be considered an allowance for doubtful account. Okay. All right. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, uncollectible. 
debt based on 5% of accounts receivable. Okay. So now we finished that. Let's go ahead and update my ledger accounts now. So we have bad debt expense. Here we are, bad debt expense, right? It's 5% of account receivable. Here's the 24th journal for $76.60. Okay. And then we need to put that in our allowance for doubtful accounts account. Okay, allowance for doubtful accounts, which is a contra account. 5% of accounts receivable. For $76.60 credit. Okay. All right. All right. So now, all right. So it says right here. We need to now calculate one month of depreciation for the truck. Its mileage is 150,000 miles before it needs to be ma uh, maintenance, right? No mm -hmm. salvage value and useful life of seven years, okay? And this month, we drove a total of 1,200 miles. So in this case, I didn't expect to go to get this far, so you will be needing your depreciation tables, okay? Okay. So in this case, depreciation tables. Okay, there you go. And we're going to do this for the truck. Okay, so let's I find my truck here. Truck. Okay. Now in this case, right, what... You, what depreciation method am I going to be using to calculate the depreciation for my truck? Would it be units of production? Units of production is correct. So UOP for short. Now, how much does my truck cost me right now? Do we know? It's 29000 It is not 29000 Okay. Where would we okay. go... It would be the actual cost of the truck, uh -huh. which was like 36000 Something like that, right? But where would we be able to find that number? Under uh, truck loan? Not the truck loan. But the uh, truck? The truck itself on the assets list, right? Right. So therefore, I'm going to go to my ledger account and go to my assets and locate my truck. Because that should tell you the full amount of my asset, right? Right. So let's see. Okay, vehicles, truck. So the truck, I purchased it for $28,900. I had to pay document fees for $968. Plus, I had to pay tax of $2,300. Hundred and forty dollars and ninety cents. So, how much is my actual truck worth? Thirty two, thirty two thousand two hundred and eight ninety. Right, thirty two two oh eight ninety. So, thirty two two oh eight ninety. Okay. Now, what did I say for my salvage value? Will I have a salvage value at the end of its life? No. 
no salvage value. Okay. Now, in this case, right, when did I place this asset into service? Okay. In other words, what's the rule of thumb when you buy a truck or buy a car uh, from any dealership? It would be the date that it was bought. Correct, because the minute you drive off the parking lot, you immediately depreciate it. So in this case, what day did I buy my truck? June 8th. June 8th. So, so therefore, I'm going to depreciate it as of June 8th. Okay? Now, how many miles is my total capacity before I have to um, go to maintenance? Uh, you did 12 hundred miles that's how many i drove this year but what's my capacity how much do i need to drive uh, is it the seven years that's how that's how long the asset can last me okay. how many miles can my truck drive is it 150,000? It can drive up to 150,000 miles before it needs maintenance, right? Before it needs tire mm -hmm. changes, before it needs an oil change, right? Yes. Okay. So, if I'm depreciating, okay. So, if I put it, place it into service as of June 8th, when do I start depreciating it? You, you'd start depreciating it that day. Yes, but I'm talking about the rules of when I depreciate it. Like, am I going to depreciate for this month? Yes or no? No. I started depreciating it as of June 8th, right? 8th, yeah. Right now it's June 30th. So you will depreciate it for the for for the month of June. Yes, because it's definitely we use it for more than fifty percent of the month, right? Right. Okay. So in this case, yes, I'm going to depreciate it for the month of June. Okay. How many miles did I drive so far? Twelve uh, twelve hundred. We drove twelve hundred miles. Good. So. Now I need to go, now that I filled in everything I have up here at the top, I need to go ahead and solve for my depreciation expense for the month of June, okay? Starting with the first one is, what is my depreciation basis? Would it be the 3208? 3208, yes, it's going to be your asset cost, mm -hmm. okay, minus your salvage value, right? So right. in this case, if I have zero for my salvage value, that means it would be 3220890. So what is going to be my per unit rate? Per unit rate. How much is it going to cost me for every mile that I drive? So it would be the 32, 208.90 divided by the 1,200. That's how many miles you drove this year. Okay. So no. Divided by the uh, 150,000? Yes. I need, to draw, I need to divide it by the total amount of um, miles I'm able to drive with this truck. Okay, so how much is that? I got uh, 0 0.2147. Mm hmm. Or 726. Yeah. So in this case, right, how do I solve for my depreciation expense? 
if I drove a total of 1,200 miles, how much am I going to depreciate my truck for? If every mile cost 2147 to 6 cents per mile. Okay, you would multiply that by the miles used. Uh huh. It's two hundred and fifty seven sixty seven. Two fifty seven sixty seven. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's how much I depreciated for the month of June. Now book value, right? It's gonna Good drop deal. down to thirty one thousand thirty one ninety one. Thirty one nine fifty one twenty three. Now question to you. I started depreciating as of the month of June. Okay. Does that matter? No. For units of production. No, it doesn't matter because what are you what what do what do what do you care most about in units of production? The value. Not the value. You care most about how many miles you drive, right? Do you care about how old your asset is? No. If it reaches over its seven-year limit, right? Does it matter? Uh, uh, yeah. Why does it matter if you go over the seven years? You have it set at seven years, right? But the am I am I going to be able to use all hundred and fifty thousand miles for the seven years? Ah, uh, I I don't I, I don't think so. Well, we don't know because it just depends on how much Albert drives, right? Right. So in this case. It does not matter how long you have the asset for. We care about how many miles you drive. Right. Okay? So that's that's the activity based of um, depreciation, right? Units of production. Right. Right? We don't care about how long the asset it is. We care about reaching that maximum capacity. So in this case, there you go. You're going to depreciate the truck for $257.67. So, how do I journalize this? How do I journalize this? You, it will be under accumulated depreciation. It'd be under accumulated depreciation. Now, in this case, do I, uh, this one is specific. Right? Right. So let's see. Let's see. Under my truck. Okay, what is it called? 17011. For the accumulated depreciation for the truck. Now, ha what is my, if that's where I'm going to be crediting my account, what's my debit account going to be? Depreciation expense? Depreciation expense, correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and put depreciation expense. Okay, and then we have the accumulated depreciation for the truck. Okay, which was 17111, right? And what right. was the, your depreciation expense account number? Sixty-six 
Okay. So now, this is what I want you to do. Since the next depreciation that you're going to complete, right, whatever it is, you're going to still end up going to the same depreciation expense account, right? Mm -hmm. So to save some extra space here, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to um, list out all of your depreciation expenses under one account or under one journal entry. So that means every time I calculate another one, because at the end of the day, all of the depreciation is all going to go to the same account. So that means right now, I know what I'm going to depreciate my truck for, right? All right. I'm going to depreciate my truck for a total of the six... I'm going to depreciate my truck for $257.67. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. Okay, so when we continue on, we're going to finish up the depreciation tables, right? We're going to calculate all the other depreciations. Okay, and then okay. when and then we're just going to add them all up to the depreciation expense because at the end of the day, they're all going into the same account. So you could just list them all here. And that's where we're going to stop today is we finish the first one depreciating for the truck. So the next thing we're going to do when we come back is start depreciating the coffee brewers. Okay. All right. Good job.